Matea is let's get started and let's talk about the homeless situation. What is it like to be homeless and live in a tent on the beach? What's it like to have your home with a homeless encampment right outside your window? It is an ongoing crisis in so many places, nowhere more so than Venice. Phil Schumann joining us live from there with some perspective. Phil. There's not one cause of homelessness, Alex and Marla, and there's not one simple solution to homelessness, whether it's here at Venice or anywhere else. The priority right now is on housing, but you could have all the money in the world to build new shelters, to pay for motels, to provide temporary rooms, but if the residents refuse to move, what are you going to do? Venice Beach, the stark contrast between the natural beauty of Southern California and the gritty reality of homeless encampments where people like Dave and Robert live. I'm out here because I want to be, not because I'm drug addicted. I am an addict, but I'm recovering. So I'm out here just because um, I want to be here. People have offered you shelter, but you prefer to stay here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you tell me why? Yeah, just prisoner of war camps for the homeless, that's all. Yes, an ongoing battle between the homeless and their advocates. Homeless aren't a problem, they're people. We don't battle the homeless. We feed them, we nurture, we, we listen to them, we ask them what do they need. And residents who've seen their quality of life decline dramatically. Not just tents, but fires, crime, fear. Mark Ryavik, one of so many, overwhelmed. The idea that these folks should continue to live outside in these uh, subnormal conditions without proper housing, without proper medical care, uh, without job training, without rehab. It's not in their best interest, and these folks are very misguided to be demanding that this re remain the way it is. And through it all, politicians promise money and debate the best strategy for housing and services. Meantime, conditions at this world-famous destination just continue to worsen. Shocking to so many who see it for the first time, like Gary Winthorpe, a tourist from Philadelphia. I didn't realize how bad it was up and down. Nothing, I've never I've seen nothing like it. In Philly, it's bad, but here it's, it's much worse. We've lived here for years, Alex and uh, Marla say these are the worst conditions they've ever seen, and they fault elected leaders, Mayor Garcetti, Councilman Mike Bonin, for lacking the political will to implement effective solutions despite plans, dedication, hard work, and compassion. Alex, Marla? Well, let's bring in Councilmember Mike Bonin to respond. He represents District 11, which includes uh, uh, Venice. Welcome, Councilmember. Thanks for being with us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. There are people that live there. There are people that work there that say that they spend a lot of money in taxes and they feel unsafe and not listened to. They don't feel heard. And they say that you and other folks in the city are more focused on protecting the homeless than protecting them. What do you say to those people? I, I, I say that's an absolutely uh, false choice. The, the solution to address the concerns of people who are housed, who don't want encampments in their neighborhoods, the solution to save the lives of people who are living in squalor and unsanitary conditions on the streets is the same. It's housing, it's shelter, said tighter. it's services. Uh, the current situation is absolutely unacceptable. And economic forecasts say that it actually could get worse as a lagging uh, result of the pandemic. More people could become homeless in Los Angeles over the next two years. We need to take aggressive action. And it's why I have repeatedly, relentlessly been fighting back lawsuits and procedural appeals by one of the guys Phil talked to uh, that have repeatedly stood in the way of the solutions we've been trying to provide, whether it's long-term housing or short-term housing or services. But uh, I'm determined to get those things done uh, and we'll get them done a lot faster if we stop getting bogged down in lit litigation and opposition. But is it just housing? Because the people that Phil talked to said, we don't want to go into housing. We like being on the streets. Mm -hmm. We like the situation as it is. So what do you do to those people? Do you force them into housing? Do the laws need to be changed? Well, first of all, it's not just housing. Housing is a key component of any solution, right? If somebody is suffering from addiction and homelessness, they need a home as well as the addiction services, the same with mental health or any other issue. Uh, I think that a lot of folks that you talk to on the street who say they don't want something haven't seen what there can be to be offered. You talk to that, that gentleman there in the wheelchair uh, who said that he was afraid of being in a POW camp for homeless people. 
Well, when people have gone and looked at some of the shared housing resources that we've shown, when people have looked at some of the hotel rooms that we are converting, people have said, you know what? Actually, I am willing to take this. This isn't what I was expecting. What I know is that a year ago in Los Angeles, our Homeless Services Authority had 30,000 people on a list who were waiting for housing solutions who were living on the streets. Mm -hmm. What I know is that when we have done targeted uh, housing operations to help people off the street and word got out that we were doing it by a targeted zone, people came from other areas in Venice looking for housing. So the demand is certainly there and I think we need to meet it. Uh, let's bring Phil Schumann into the conversation. Phil, you were out there all day long. Go ahead. Hey, Phil. Well, Councilman, you've been working uh, on West Side issues for 25 years. And um, I'm just wondering, when you walk the streets of Venice, and I've been out there with you, when you walk the boardwalk and you see the conditions here, what are you thinking? How do you feel? I'm 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 horrified. It's 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 absolutely unacceptable. I mean, it's it's a it, it is not not only unacceptable to people uh, who, who who are visiting or who are who are businesses or whatever. It is just unacceptable as just a a pure humanitarian moral issue. It is a sin that that is happening in the city of Los Angeles. And for a long time, but you say that it's wrong. Choices. Well, for a long time, you we say didn't that it's have wrong and unacceptable. But you, you've been in office since 2013, and you, more than anyone else, perhaps, ha have the power to, to force change. Oh, I, I, I wish I had a, a hell of a lot more power. If I could unilaterally approve projects and don't have things tied up in, in litigation and protests from, like, Mr. Ryvek, who you spoke to, uh, we'd have stuff that, that would have been uh, in the pipeline a lot earlier. Uh, if, if we had had the resources that the governor and the mayor are offering in the next budget, where we can now purchase motels, like I have been advocating for for four years, or if we had the money four years ago when I first started calling for it for shared housing where people share a home, uh, we'd have a hell of a lot more progress. Uh, I've, I've had plans out there for a long time. If if we had the funding for it and people stopped roadblocking them, uh, we'd get stuff done. We, we, we can't simultaneously have people saying, I cannot tolerate encampments, but then object to the alternatives. Well, you've, you've gotten encampments a lot of- Encampments are absolutely unacceptable. We need to put the alternatives Inputs. You've gotten a lot of objections to your proposal to turn some of those beach parking lots on the west side into essentially homeless shelters there. Can you understand the pushback that local residents who live there and as Alex said, pay good money to live there? Absolutely. Uh, I can understand the pushback. I don't think that any of the locations that we're looking at are, are optimal, uh, but we're looking at what we got. Uh, on the west side, because every part of the city needs to do its part, uh, we are uh, effectively stuck looking at government-owned properties in most cases. Community colleges have said no to us. We're doing a lot of stuff at the VA. We're looking at LAX. Uh, we're already building housing on most of the city lots. So we're looking at, at available state and, and, and county properties. Uh, I hope with the money that we're getting from the governor, uh, if it is approved by the legislature, we won't need to do any of what I've proposed. I hope we'll be able to buy up a lot of uh, hotels. I hope we'll be able to lease a lot of apartment buildings and get people off the street without it. But if the number one complaint I hear, and I'm sure that you've heard it as well, is about encampments in our neighborhoods, the most responsible thing we can do is any alternative possible. Short of the housing being available, that's tiny home villages, that's designated uh, 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 safe sleeping areas, I don't want to do that stuff, but if that's the alternative to having people uh, living in sidewalks in unsafe encampments in front of people's homes, then let's do it. Cause... How soon can people there expect change? Uh, well, we just opened up uh, just uh, a week and a half ago. We opened up a 44-room converted motel in Westchester. We are scheduled to be opening up a 33-room converted motel uh, in um, uh, uh, Venice in the month of June. Uh, I am looking to put a million dollars online uh, for shared housing in Venice exclusively. That would be able to get 100 people off, off, off the streets. If the governor's money and the money in the city budget comes through, we're considering 
offering at Thursday, uh, then we'll be able to partner with the county and hopefully move another couple hundred people off the street. Well, and, and you've talked about this a few times now, the governor's budget. He's proposing $12 billion for homelessness, which is way more than has ever been spent by the state. This past year was a billion. So what does that specifically look like? That goes through the next year in Los Angeles with $12 billion being spent on homelessness. What, what it looks like to me is uh, we need to purchase things that we can have in perpetuity. We shouldn't be uh, using the bulk of that. We should use some of it for emergency solutions, but we should be using the bulk of it for things that we are going to have in the long term. Last December, the city bought 18 motels, two of them in my district. This will give us the opportunity to buy a lot more of them. I have landlords, property owners in my district who have said, I'll do a, t a 10 or 20 year lease with you for, for, for a bunch of units in, 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 our, in our holdings. Uh, let's do that. Then we've got something online where we're taking tomorrow's dollar and we're providing housing for a decade. And that's the kind of thing we need to be doing. Last question quickly to you, Phil. So, Councilman, uh, you said you had about 40 units in Westchester and another 30 or so coming online in Venice. Uh, I'm not clear if those are going to be filled or how quickly, but do you have a reliable count of how many people are on the streets in Venice? We don't have a reliable count right now because the uh, uh, the federal government waived the, um, the the home of census last year because right. of the pandemic. So, uh, you know, I would but say it's, it's more than a, it's more than a thousand, state, I would say. Right. I, I would say it's easily more than a thousand. That's why I argue we should be uh, getting a, 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 a bigger share than, than other places uh, of city and state and county resources because we've got one of the, the biggest uh, densely concentrated populations of unhoused people. And it's, it, it's, a, it's a public safety imperative for housed and unhoused alike to get them indoors. Well, Council Member uh, Mike Bonin, we appreciate you. This is a tough uh, discussion uh, that needs to be had. It is a crisis out there on the streets of Venice. So we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you. And Phil Schumer, Always glad to have a discussion. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay. And, and please come back because this yes. is such a complicated thing. We could talk about this literally for an entire half hour and have a lot more to talk mm -hmm. about. You've we got a weekend show. I'll come on and talk for an hour and a half. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Councilman. And Phil. And thank thank you, you, Phil. Phil, thank yeah. you. Really.